This is Anime Archaeology Station, broadcasting anime analysis to anyone who will listen. We have a basement archive full of an ever-growing collection of anime media. We tell you about it and explain the terms and tropes behind this unique medium. Thanks for joining us. Hello everyone, welcome to the broadcast. Hope you're having a good day wherever you happen to be right now. And first off, we have definitely addressed the issue we had from last time with the broadcast issues. Um, I have definitely verified that that bug, literal bug, was the problem. And a uh, bit of an update on that actually, and uh, it actually ties in nicely to the anime we'll be talking about today. Um, turns out that bug got in and was corrupting some of our backups. Now everything's okay, we've got everything good, um, but I was had to check back up on our quantum holographic backup system, and uh, there was some corruption in our backup of uh, one of the anime back there, and so I refreshed it, everything's fine, but the anime in question was one that I'd actually like to talk about um, as kind of an interesting note on this. It's called uh, Invincible Superman Zambot 3. And um, it is also by the director of Double Zeta Gundam, which we're watching in this series. And uh, again, just kind of interesting parallels between these two shows. Now, Zambot 3 came out in 1978, a year before the first Gundam series. So this is before Gundam was even a thing. Uh, he made Zambot 3, and Zambot 3 starts as a very traditional kids anime. Uh, it's a mecha anime. In this case, it's three kids who all pilot kind of this combined uh, a mecha. And, yeah, it's, it's very t typical. If I show you what the main kid looks like and his dress-up like, you can tell. This is definitely aimed at a younger audience. It's just fun, giant robot adventures, literally evil aliens from another planet want to take over Earth. That's the plot. Um, so for the first half or so of the show, it's very much just that. Monster of the Week, kids jump into their mecha and combine and fight it off. Um, they each have a vehicle which combines. Then partway through, Tomino decided to change things. And I'm not going to get into spoilers about what actually happens because I think it's worth seeing what actually happens. But... Um, Let's just say things get a lot darker as that show <laughs> progresses. Uh, there's this just massive shift in tone as the, um, the threat becomes very different. I'll just put it that way. And this was very much Tomino saying, no, I want to have a tragic, dramatic story in this mecha show. Uh, very shocking to people at the time and shocking for anyone watching it. It's this big shift. And uh, that shift is also accompanied by, like, a, not just a shift in tone, but also, like, in the kinds of stories being told in the anime. Like, there, there are some elements in there that are just really dark. And so that is why I wanted to bring it up today, because I think Double Zeta Gundam is a little bit like that. It starts off very light adventure. And it takes a while before Tomino starts layering in the darker stories. Now, I don't think it's, it's nowhere near as abrupt as Zambot 3. Double Zeta Gundam is not nearly this flip as Zambot 3. And it's not like Zambot is suddenly all comedy and it's suddenly all drama. But Tomino clearly wanted to start light in Double Zeta. And then, as time went on, add more drama, add more seriousness. So, if you're interested in kind of a proto version of some of the things in this... You might want to go back and check out Zambot 3. Just an interesting contrast to what's going on in Double Zeta. But again, our backups are fine. Everything's cool. Now, I do want to do a segment here where I talk about the animation of Double Zeta Gundam, particularly this episode. But I'm going to actually switch things around a bit. Uh, last time we talked about the genres of the show before the actual episode. Instead, we're going to jump to the analysis here in a minute, and um, uh, then I'm going to do the animation analysis after that. So I want to kind of get to the analysis quickly. But before we do that, a few things to watch out for in this episode. 
the first is the accelerated comedy, like how is the comedy tone of this working for you? The second is more about um, what you feel about Mashimori Cello's motivations in this episode, uh, and also how those motivations are interacting with his actual experiences <laughs> in the episode. And then finally, um, Keep an eye out for how Tomino uses kind of a show don't tell approach where you see characters actions and then later what they were trying to do is revealed to you. Some fun stuff to look out for there. So uh, yeah, let me go ahead and get in uh, Steve here. Let me call him in. Here we go. All right, Steve, looks like you are in. How are things up in Baltimore? Doing all right. The rumors are staying outside the fence, so all is good. Glad to hear. Let's get into some Double Zeta Gundam. Wow. They yeah. are animating that. They're literally spinning the ones around so you can see. Wow, that's that's work. Wow. Yeah. So, wow. quite the change of scenery. Obviously moving to much wealth. And yes. again, contrasting, we've, we've seen like really blue collar, almost slums, most, most of what we've seen here, and then like the port and such. And then like literally a garbage dump, <laughs> like a scrap metal yard. Uh, this is quite the shift. And, and I love how he goes, I'm sorry, I don't have any cash or money. And to me, I, if I was a clerk, I would have been like, out. <laughs> but then he, he just produces, you know, <laughs> gold bars, just like keep the change. What else am I gonna do? Chunk, a chunk all of this and give it back to you? <clears throat> uh, you also wonder what kind of fancy hotel like can they can accept a gold bar as tender? <laughs> right? Can you just imagine that yeah. that the receipts of the next day the deposit? Yeah. they're going ten, twenty gold bar. Like, <laughs> what? Although, in fairness. This is war, right? We've just had, mm -hmm. we had the one-year war. We've had a bunch of other stuff happen since then. You know, mm -hmm. certainly when you have uh, countries and economies with, with that kind of stuff, alternative forms of payment do become more common. So in fairness, maybe that is that something is where some folks are like, well, I just got out of my, you know, my, my mansion before it was destroyed. This is literally all I have. Here's my family silver. Who knows? Yeah, yeah. Okay, as he's changing clothes, he wants to show Cello something. Yeah. <laughs> and I do wonder if that isn't a little bit of that uh, invisible sexuality thing, where it's like, you know, you know what we said. Right? Yeah. <laughs> like, we'll throw that in there just for, for the joke. Well, there we go. And, yes, smitten. <laughs> totally, totally smitten. Cue the violins. <laughs> now, it should be pointed out, this is it must be after his initial meeting because he's wearing the rose. Right. Now, she says to Cello, I have high hopes for you. Anyone who spent any time with Haman Khan knows that she does not say things for no reason. Right. Um, you know, she's one of the most manipulative characters in Gundam. So... What, what this is telling us here is that she is, I, I'll use the phrase, setting him up, clearly, right? Like, yeah. she, she's not just buttering him up for no reason. Like, she's, she has a plan here. All right, so now we know what he's doing here. Um, so it's not just, because, again, what Tomino so often does is, here's stuff happening. Wait a minute. I'll explain later. Uh, right. So... We've seen, we saw him show up, now we know he's here to scout the colony and establish it as a forward base for uh, Axis. Fair enough. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Eddie Howard, I love your dead blue eyes. Oh, oh the memories of it all. Oh, God. <laughs> Dude, get a room. <laughs> and uh, pop a few fewer pills, I just gotta say. Uh... <laughs> All right. So well, yeah, exactly. It should be pointed out uh, we have an uh, East New York BB. Yep. Uh, maybe barbecue is the intent there. Perhaps. 
uh, flowers to the right of that, and then maybe coffee across the street, the yellow and orange sign. And people uh, standing right in the middle of the intersection. People just standing right in the middle of the intersection, yeah. Huh. Okay. Wow, Baltimore. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Not something you'd expect to hear from a Gundam antagonist, but also something that does become kind of a, a theme in general in Gundam is that Zeon or Neo Zeon or Axis or whatever, um, one of their big things is establishing their culture. You know, they're a, this very new civilization, if you will, and so they have this really strong idea of, of passing it on to other generations, making people understand what they are. So here's a big difference between original Gundam and here. Mm-hmm. Amaro was in his skivvies, and True. Frau comes in, and Frau is just like that. You know, she's trying to take care of him like he's a little boy. She comes in as if he's a little boy. Get up, and he gets up, and she gets embarrassed, mm-hmm. and he goes, "Oh, what you see?" Huh? Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. True. Oh, you know, so totally different, totally different. Uh, you know, uh, he, unlike Amaro, is aware that she is a girl. It's true. <laughs> <laughs> You're absolutely right. That's a great point. Huh. Interesting. Um, hmm. Yeah, I don't know. Well, that was interesting. Yeah. <clears throat> and I just. A, that she's sitting on top of all that. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> and then he's just like... Eh, eh, eh. Yeah. Um, just, just very quick movements there. Yeah, definitely. Uh, something that they show us multiple times here, his dexterity. How, mm-hmm. like, when something happens, he grabs onto it with his foot and so forth. Which I think it's across, A, him being a... more of a um, uh, space colonist, right? More used to zero gravity. Right. But also just this, that he is, again, contrast with Amaro and Camille, he's not a desk jockey. He's very much out there doing the work. Oh, wow. So then going, Yeah, going back to this, there's a spreading the money around. Um, a lot of bribes happening. Okay. Yeah. I so. mean, besides this just being, you know, telling us more information, it's got to be said, this is kind of, uh, this could sum up a lot of what Gundam has to say about war right there. Yeah. Doesn't understand anything anymore because of the war. Like, that sums up so much of what happens in these anime. Yeah. And, and one of the, the, the starting off point of, of the scene of him reminds me of if, if there's any Ran- Ranma fans watching this. This is Kuno. Oh, yeah. So, this is Kuno because remember Kuno is like in love and, and initially with with um, the <clears throat> the one girl, um, and then he comes across Ranma as a girl and he's in love with her and now he's just like oh, such beauty, such beauty in white. <laughs> and it's like well, what about Lady Harmon? You can't have them both. What you know? Exactly. All right, whatever, dude. Also, she's wearing yellow. Just saying. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> Why he is not face palming? All the time. I don't know. (laughs) (laughs) I was kidding. There it is. (laughs) I'm too good at this, apparently. Uh, Oh, God. Oh, God, dude. Quit white knighting, please. You need to write some poetry. (laughs) Just just, just let it out. Get, get, Get some of this stuff on paper. Honestly, this is not not the healthiest sort of internal dialogue to be having with you here. Oh, God. Uh, I do wonder, and this is a, a period where Gundam is kind of commenting on various trends and so forth. So I do wonder if this isn't a little bit of a, uh, a commentary on all these things. And he's definitely a Bishonen. Like, he is the, the most Bishonen oh, character yeah. in, in this anime. Hmm. Bojana Bill right there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so much for not scaring anybody. <laughs> I'm gonna, I don't want to scare anybody. Oh, we're not going to scare anybody. <laughs> yeah, exactly. All yeah. right. Um, 
I, I guess maybe the the idea was when they were transporting it, they needed something to cover it while they were going through the colony, yeah, so they yeah, covered it in, in bottles. Um, but yeah, this is this is gonna it's gonna raise some eyebrows. Okay, so again, funny. Um, yeah, I just appreciate kind of the comedy of okay, congratulations, you've done that. Now what? <laughs> So it, it is neat, and it, it should be pointed out. Um, what they're doing here is playing around a little bit with animation, where, and this is basically a camera view he's seeing in here. This is technically complicated to pull off, uh, because basically you're putting a picture in picture of an animation. So you have to have one animation here, and then a whole other set of cells in here that uh, you're putting yeah. in there, or you're like compositing it, right? Um, so you're like cutting out that section with a, um, what do you call it? A, um, what they used to do in Tron, where they like do the black on white, um, thing. Oh God. Um, 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 um. but yes, that thing where you're compositing it in. Yeah. You know, um, so for this little thing, like they have to do quite a bit. And also it's not easy to animate somebody, you know, zoom, zoom, going in and out, in and out, in and out. Um, so there's there's a lot going on here for for this scene. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, aren't aren't we a little high and mighty? My goodness, child of lower character. <laughs> lower character, sorry, you don't have my white suit to make <laughs> proper rose in your lapel, little scum of the earth. Good lord, probably nutritionally deficient, but you know. Whatever. <laughs> I'll give you an orange when we get back. Just, just, just <laughs> wander off. So again, I, I just appreciate how they're getting across the personalities of these characters, um, and the the dialogue here, where they're they got this plan, they're trying to figure things out, and kind of going to move forward. And in other anime, he would you know yell back and say you know make sure to put the, the bottles in the sand because that is the writer telling the audience what she's doing having her then go that's what i'm doing yeah <laughs> you know i just really appreciate that oh <laughs> oh so there's a moment wow definitely wow but this is a very kind of um almost like a ursa yatara vibe yeah to this fight. yeah uh very stylized very much these characters are just kind of kicking at each other but like not really doing any damage it's just very comedic and very over the top um interesting to have at this moment i have to ask a question here did haman actually say this it's an oddly specific thing for her to have told him back in that moment or is he just fantasizing at this point right Knowing him, it's in the poetry of his mind. Mm -hmm. Yeah, probably. Or his, or, or his blood is starting to boil again. <laughs> his blood is definitely boiling at this point. So this is interesting. Bright's waiting for them to come back. And you'll notice he's... In, they said they would, right? Like, you know, literally say, right. I'll come back tomorrow. So Bright's waiting for this, but then he's counting on it. He's like, okay, if you're gonna come back, let's take advantage of this. Smart. And again, you have to wonder, you know, did Bright know that there would be access outside? So he's like, go right. ahead, steal it. <laughs> Please do. Mm -hmm. All right, so this is notable. Uh, here he is saying, Zeta Ike. One of the big things in Gundam, for those who may not have been around for, for a while, there became a tradition in Gundam series after original Amuro. People have lots of different ways of saying, you know, launching or going out or whatever. Uh, Amuro would say ikimas, uh, which is one of the words for that. And so it became a tradition that once the hero actually starts using ikimas, that means he is now the official protagonist. You know, he's now cross that line from just fooling around to being the, the protagonist. Not there yet. 
So we're, we're, we're still waiting for the Ikimas from Judo. Well. <laughs> okay. That definitely changes things a little bit. Um, and again, they set this up where they said this, this is going to blow a hole in the colony, but it's, we're way out in the middle of nowhere. It's not going to hurt anybody. But yeah, that's still, that's still something. And now we see what Bright's doing. And intentionally yep. or not, he's basically saying, okay, um, I'm going to let you steal the Gundam, and then you'll get into jam. I will then guide you out which will then put you in debt to me, so to speak. Um, that's smart. It's very clever. Okay. This made no sense to me until I realized he's plugging the holes with his clothes. The holes in it. Yeah. Okay, good. It, <laughs> it's funny, but also it is what he would do. Okay. Wow. Okay. <laughs> okay, Mashima. Cute uh, cellos psychotic so poetry in your mind how how old my is my base that led to my failure you know Fa's not exactly like your age just saying just saying <laughs> all right uh, okay so <laughs> one thing i've learned is that when we hear the baroque music mm -hmm. he's he's gonna he's gonna go off on his psychotic poetry again and, mm -hmm. and like the, the whole rose and <laughs> Lady Haman my angel my oh my god so delusional exactly uh, alright so what have we learned in this episode um, seriously we've <clears throat> established that uh, Mashimure uh, Cello is delusional uh, but he has this like really strong motivation, you know. He's yeah. desperately obsessed with Haman Khan, and he wants to follow her lead in making side one a uh, functioning uh, colony, basically, of Axis. We know that. Um, not much more about Judo or the other folks in there. No. Um, they're just still trying to, to steal the Argama, but now Bright has ensnared them. Yes. So now we he knows how to... Go ahead. I was going to say, now he knows, because he knows how to deal with this. <laughs> Third time. <laughs> and he... But, but no, seriously, he knows how to do this now, so he's just kind of like, okay, well, I've got his friends. He's not going to abandon his friends. We know that. Mm -hmm. He's not really being a soldier, and I've helped him out, so he's already established that he'll play nice if I, you know, mm -hmm. do the thing for him. And so he, we all know that, that Judo's going to play nice and, and return with, with, with the Zeta. The, the thing, the other thing that we kind of get a more sense of in this episode is... The idea that this access, some of the people in the access, like Cello here, is actually not inherently an evil, bad sure. villain. True. Right? Yeah. He's an antagonist, certainly, but he is not, you know, his his, his motivations and his direction is, well, delusional somewhat, um, is tempered by the fact, okay, I want to create a society here. I don't want to destroy things. You know, remember, in the other two uh, two series, you know, we were constantly amazed where they're just like, yeah, they fired on the side. Okay, <laughs> great. You know? <laughs> yep. And he doesn't want to do that. Like, True. he's he's really right. trying not to, not, not to, not to um, destroy things. Mm -hmm. So it just is that concept of going, yes, he's on the opposite side of these things, but he's not, he's, we don't hate him. You know, he, we're, we're not going to, you know, look at him and go, oh, oh, you, 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 you. We're going to be like, oh, poor guy. Yeah. <laughs> and to that point, like, he has this very specific chivalric, chivalrous code right. that he's following, like, to an almost absurd degree. But, you know, he is going to act in a very specific way. Yeah. Meanwhile, his competent soldier assistant is just saying, they're just going, oh, my God. <laughs> Oh my dude, can we just lay the landmine and just call it a day? I mean, 
But I want to actually rewind back to your point about Bright and how much he's thinking this through. If he had tried this with Amaro, Amaro would have just been like, um, don't care. Yeah. Um, Camille would have just gotten angry and punched something, I think. Um, <laughs> yeah. Because, uh, like, uh, does Camille have any friends? I don't know. Um, mm. The fact that Bright was able to play on Judo's loyalty to his friends uh, through observation, through realizing here's how to deal with this guy and get him in, uh, again, just shows how much Bright understands what's going on. And to your point, is like, I need to do the exact same thing I did before, but play to this person's strengths. Yeah. And and it should be noted that it, we are firmly in the camp of of this particular series thus far mm. on the third episode that this is not a war story. Mhm. Mm right? Absolutely. And we are not looking at two aces facing off. It's true. Yeah, you're right. Right? All right. So one guy, Shallow, he's he's got he's got an edge because he's actually military trained. Mhm. Mm Judo is new type and he kind of already has a working knowledge of mecha anyway True. and then with with brights you know cello's just constantly handicapped through his own interior monologue <laughs> <laughs> you know and, and that's kind of the edge for 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 judo mm -hmm. but that and also having bright just saying hey do this that and the other thing mm -hmm. um so these are so we're not looking at aces fighting each other we're not you know the balance of of mankind is not is not resting on these no. two at all and the show does point out, you know, the, the Zeta Gundam is still the superior piece of tech. So that's giving Judo an edge as well. Um, yeah. You know, regardless of what. And the other thing, the thing to point out is that, you know, Axis is kind of on its back legs. It's trying to restart the Principality of Zeon, basically. Um, and it has plenty of resources and so forth. But it's not churning out, you know, Gundam-level technology over and over, right. not getting another Zeong or any of those sorts of things. So, right. yes, these are uh, increasingly advanced uh, mobile suits, but the Zeta can still very much uh, uh, hold its own and 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 uh, yeah. you know, even even be more advanced than those. Um, I do appreciate we talked about uh, this before the pacing of a fifty episode anime series. The fact that we mm -hmm. can. <clears throat> move along with these characters, get introduced to these characters, and we don't need to be saving the world in episode one. Um, right. I feel like I know these characters a lot better than I would have in another show that's rushing to get to the drama. Right, right. <clears throat> yeah, we, we, we're we invested with a lot of these characters. Um, you know, we, we, we... That's one of the things about comedy. True. Is, is, is that it draws you into a person... So yeah. you can think Cello is absolutely ridiculous, and he is absolutely ridiculous, and you know we can laugh at him, whatever. But at the same time, we go, we know who this guy is. Yeah. You know, we we, we know who this guy is, and we kind of like him on a certain mm -hmm. level. You, you know, we just we're just kind of like going you know, with comedy with with his interior monologuing and and mm -hmm. just you know just kind of going, oh okay okay we get it <laughs> all right all right you're you're love struck okay we understand we get it. And then just having those comedic moments, like when they're having the fight outside of the cockpit, like they're just kicking at each other yeah. in the legs, right? You know, it's, yeah, it's a battle. Yeah, they're trying to hurt each other, but it just doesn't, the comedy says, yeah, yeah, but, 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 but laugh at this. Mm -hmm. Laugh at, laugh at this for the moment and, and understand that what we're trying to do with this and we're trying to use the comedy to not, we, we're, we're putting the two by four down yeah. for a little while. Right, we're gonna we're not gonna smack you in the face with war is bad. We think you've got that already. I think you can, you can compare and contrast this with like G Gundam, where yeah that came along and folks were like, what what are you doing? This is not Gundam, and G proved well it can be. You know we we can have different tones in different Gundam series and it's okay. Um, Double Zeta feels very much like that. Where goes, goes yeah we can we can have comedy, we can have lightness we can have silliness and goofiness uh while still telling a uh, uh 
an interesting, you know, a, a compelling story. So, yeah. Um, any other thoughts? It is definitely, if, if you're a Gundam fan, if you're a new Gundam fan and you've just gotten through Mobile Suit and you've just gotten mm-hmm. through Zeta and you're just like, going, I really like Gundam, but I just don't know if I can. <laughs> I think this is what double. I think yeah. this is what Tomino wanted was with, with Double Zeta, which is, you know, we're gonna take a little break here. Yeah. You're absolutely <laughs> right. Well, it's it's the funny thing. Like, I almost feel if you didn't have Camille in these episodes, this would mm-hmm. be an almost ideal introduction to Gundam, right? If you wanted to actually, it's true. Yeah, start someone out like it's very light, it's very fun, but you still get you know the various factions and so forth and so on. There's just this kind of awkward, all of this kind of baggage of the previous series to get through. Um, yeah. But it's very appealing. And also, when you start off an anime saying, this is not an anime. <laughs> that's a bot. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's episode three. Um, so that's that. Uh, yeah, I love Gundam. Uh, cool stuff. <laughs> cool stuff. All right, welcome to the animation analysis room. This might be your first time in here. Uh, I like to come down in here and like look at the animation itself and dig into kind of how that works. And just a few things I wanted to mention and point out about the animation of Double Zeta now that we're three episodes in. A couple of things. (laughs) First is you'll notice that the characters are uh, off model occasionally throughout the course of the episodes. What do I mean by that? The character designer of an anime will come up with a specific model sheet that says this is exactly how the character looks like. It's this character standing up, this character, you know, in various situations. And whenever the animators animate the character, they're supposed to match that model sheet exactly. Now, unfortunately, you don't see that happening quite as much in Double Zeta. Here is Mashimori Cello, one of the new characters we meet here. And if you contrast the different shots here, you'll notice, yeah, they're fairly different. Uh, in fact, let's zoom in a little. In what he looks like. So, um, you know, things are just a little bit off model. In fact, uh, let's go back in on that and, and zoom in. Look. All pretty different shapes for that chin. And this is normal in animation. It's really hard to match those character designs exactly every time. But it happens quite a bit in Double Zeta. And I think part of that is because they're trying to churn out a new Gundam series every year. Like, this is just a huge amount of material to produce, and so it's not surprising that that kind of standard would slip somewhat in the course of a show. I don't think it gets in the way of anything. Like, it's very clear who the characters are, but it is just worth noting that that is not uncommon. And again, this is a thing that you see in other Gundam series. It's, it's not, a, not a complaint. Just something to that did, did stand out to me a fair amount in this episode. Uh, secondly, we'll notice that the tweens are a little more rough. Now, I don't mean, you know, kids around 11 or 12 years old. I mean, in animation, you generally have one person drawing the most important drawings in a sequence, hands it over to somebody else to draw the drawings that are in between those, also called the tweens. So, if you see an animation sequence and some of the drawings partway through look a little rough, they don't quite match the visuals of the other, maybe the eyes are off, whatever. That means the uh, tweens, the animator kind of assisting to fill in, uh, didn't quite match that very well. And uh, an example here is from this episode of Judo climbing up. You'll notice the um, stance of his legs is a little bit off.
that's what I mean. The tweens feel a little rough here sometimes when uh, a character is doing a lot of movement. Third thing to mention is something that actually surprised me, I didn't realize until I started um, digging into this, is how the mecha are actually shown in particularly this episode of Double Zeta. Now, when I was going back and looking at it, usually in a mecha anime, the, the mecha are framed kind of like this. Uh, they're, the, the, the camera is looking at them basically as though they are humans, right? We're at kind of head level or chest level on the mecha. This is one of the only shots in this episode that's like this. It's quite surprising. Um, and when I went back and looked at other shots of Mecha in this episode, they really fall into one of three categories. Other than when, when we're in battle, the Mecha are either framed from... as Mecha, which I think tells us a lot about these episodes. These episodes are not about the Mecha. Uh, I mentioned in the last episode that I think Double Zeta is almost incidentally a Mecha anime uh, at this point, that the Mecha exists, but they're just war machines at this point in terms of the plot. Uh, it's not fundamental, you know, their Mechaness is not fundamental to the story that much. And this is another clue of that, that we're really not treating the mecha the way other mecha uh, anime treat them. The mecha are um, fighter jets or tanks or helicopters. They are impersonal objects that these humans are interacting with. The mecha do not, are not foregrounded the way they are in a lot of other mecha anime. So again, it's kind of interesting to see how that choice of camera angle, the choice of what we see and how things are portrayed in the anime, does have an impact on our experience of the show. Uh, and I think does reveal a little bit about what the show is trying to do. So that's what I've noticed so far about the animation of Double Zeta. Hope that's helpful. Uh, let's head on back up. All right, that's that. Uh, thankfully, everything's back to normal here. Again, backups running, broadcast seems to have gone fine today. So uh, thank you all for joining me. Hope Double Zeta has been useful for you next time we're actually gonna switch off of Double Zeta and we're going to uh, start looking at Anne of Green Gables from 1979. Yes, there is an anime adaptation of, of Anne of Green Gables. And before you go, eh, okay, whatever, it was directed by Isao Takahara, director of Grave of the Fireflies and Taylor Princess Kaguya and lots of other cool things. Uh, it's a remarkable, work like it's it's an it's incredible frankly so i think you'll enjoy it if you're willing to to check it out but uh hope you'll join us for that because it's a ride and uh, this has been a fun ride thank you all see you all next time until then watch more anime